Hello, hello. Thanks for stopping by. This is Fathom for the Atari 2600, made by iMagic and released in 1983. iMagic was one of those 2600 third-party developers, but this one actually had a pretty solid roster of games. They also have this unique cartridge design that kind of makes them stand out from the more standard Atari 2600 carts. They sort of have this ridge at the top of the cart, and the labels are foil. Some have some decent graphics on the label, too. For this one, the box is the one with the cool graphic. Found a picture online here. We get this sultry mermaid behind bars with glowing red eyes, but uh, now that I'm looking at it, maybe I'm starting to think this is a little more terrifying than I originally thought. I guess I like her 80s hair, but the lower half fish thing, that eh, looks a little odd. Okay, now I don't know what to make of this one. Anyway, the cart doesn't have any fancy graphics, just foil and text. Still, it's got this nice shiny cart. Nice. I have a bunch of iMagic cartridges actually for the 2600, and overall, I find this company tends to actually be pretty good. I mean, there are a lot of 2600 games that seem to have little thought put into them. In terms of, well, gameplay, colors, design, whatever. But this one, actually, you know, they're pretty good overall. The goal in this particular game is to rescue the terrifying mermaid you see on the cover. Her name is Neptunia. This is Neptune's daughter, and I have to say that is a very lazy name for a daughter. Anyway, she's been captured. You'll need to collect three pieces of Neptune's trident to free her from her prison. What I kind of want to know is why Neptune's trident isn't three pieces to begin with. Is he always just leaving his trident around the sea for people to step on and break? Guess you can't have nice things. Well, you play Proteus, and I guess you're a member of Neptune's court, and in this game you'll switch between being a dolphin or a seagull, and you're going to either fly or swim around looking for pieces of the trident. You have a time limit in this one, and it's basically your points, and you actually need to free Neptunia seven times to win the game. Well, that's a little puzzling to me. I wonder why once isn't enough. What did the extra six times actually do? Um, more important, I guess, why does she keep getting captured? I don't know about you, but after the second time freeing someone, I'd probably give up. Hey, you get caught one time, that's bad. Twice, you're just being careless. Anyway, we're using the good old Atari joystick here, so you have one button. The fire button is what you hold when you want to swim. You start out as a dolphin, and you need to swim around and catch all the seahorses that you can. You're going to be dodging through seaweed patches and avoiding swarms of octopuses, although the octopuses kind of look like jellyfish. When you catch enough seahorses, a starfish may appear. You want the starfish. When you get a starfish, you're going to get a piece of the trident. Also, if you touch the right amount of seahorses, a bird symbol might appear at the bottom left of your screen, and when this happens, you need to get back to the surface, and you can turn into a seagull. When you're a seagull, you kind of do the same thing, just in a different environment. In this one, though, you press the fire button to flap your wings, but you do it like the game Joust. I'm using a Retron 77 controller that came with this system, and you have to actually mash this button to fly, as opposed to the dolphin where you just hold it down. You mash this one so much, it's killing my thumb. I'm going to have to try other controllers to see if I can get more comfortable. Anyway... When you're a seagull, you have to fly into the sky, and you have to touch pink clouds. Pink clouds will get you points, and when you do that, a star might appear. Then you grab the star. If you get enough stars, you'll get another piece of the trident. Well, I guess they're supposed to be pink clouds. They really look more like flying saucers, and yes, I guess they have some pink in them. They're generally flat, and they're unappealing as clouds, but what are you going to do? There are also these gray clouds that are floating around, and... If you touch them, there's a possibility they might get you a star, but they cost you points when you touch them. And points are your timer in this one, so you got to be careful. The game manages two basic levels here. They're similar. You got underwater, and then you get the sky, and both have opportunities for you to gather stars and get a piece of the trident. It's a similar end result, but there's a slightly different delivery, that's all. When you gather all the pieces of the trident, you go back into the water, you swim all the way down to Neptunia, which means you're going to have to go through another dodging mission through the sea, and then you just touch her cage, and that frees her. And little hearts show up, and you basically beat that phase. And then you start again, but the map gets larger. Or, by map, I mean accessible screens. When you're a seagull, when you start, you can just go to the left or the right and up in both sides. Now, if you run into a volcano screen on this one, that'll be the end of the current left and right progression that you can go, but as you start to get the map larger, you can go up more than one screen and it just becomes more difficult that way because there's just more objects it's a further distance to make and once again you're on a timer overall i think they did a really good job with this one in terms of design i mean 
2600 certainly has limits, and to make a good game, you had to be clever. This one's pretty clever. The underwater portions make sense to me, I guess. You have to do dodge underwater stuff, and above water, you have to dodge things that you'd find in the air. Birds and clouds and what have you, and having a volcano island, even though you don't really do anything there, it's pretty neat looking. It's nice to break up the monotony that way. I think a lot of games for the 2600 feel really small or monotonous. Now, there's definitely a monotony to all these games, but this one, there's decent variety in the game screens, and they do a pretty good job establishing some reasonable gameplay. I like how you're not always in the sea, and you're not always in the air. I think this is a pretty solid outing for iMagic. There are so many Atari games that are nothing more than one screen in front of you that never changes, and that's it. Here, we get multiple. I think that's great. It's kind of too bad that iMagic imploded when the video game market crashed in the mid-80s. At that point, they'd made a total of about 24 games, and 14 seemed to be for the Atari 2600. I got 10 of those so far. Probably get a complete collection of that eventually. I wonder what they would have made if they kept going. I also think that the look of the dolphin you have in this game, I think they did a pretty good job with these uh, graphics. I think it looks like a dolphin to me. And when you jump out of the water, it just seems to feel appropriate for the system in the game. I think it's a great little animation. Well, that's all I have for Fathom for the Atari 2600. If you're interested, please feel free to like and subscribe, all that stuff. Thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you on another video.